our viewers, I still remain your host, Joshua. Everybody is a sound engineer. Knowingly or unknowingly, you're shaping your sound. There are so many ways of generating this sound. You generate it yourself if you are singing or talking the way I am now. It's just within you. You can generate this sound between you and an object known as musical instrument. So today we are going to talk about relationship between attitude and sound design. Why the two affect the way you play instrument. Do you know that a hungry man is an angry man? When somebody offends you, it tears in the way you interface with this electronic. Kindly bear in mind that uh, this system only has body. They don't have spirit. They don't possess soul. So for this keyboard to make sense, it means it must interface with human being. So that is why the quality of this depend on you. Now, when you play in complementary to other instrumentalists, you know, that is one of the character check. Again, when you play and you don't care about what any other sound is, then that is another dimension of character. So you know, these two set of people will have different results. It means if I am loud, I will consider somebody and bring down my level. Better still, I can relate with this thing by the attack mechanism I give on this to give me either sound. Now, we're going to talk about sound envelope. You need it very well. You know, consciously, you might be seeing them, but you don't know these are sound envelope. It's shaping your sound. It polish your sound. It makes your sound presentable. If you play keyboard, yes, it's true that you, your hand actually plays keyboard to produce, produce sound. But your techniques, your skill, and the way you interface with these things will either make or mar your sound. Your understanding of sound envelope will shaping your sound. We polish your sound. Sound envelope is the way sound gets louder and softer over time. Every musical instrument has its own sound envelope. The sound envelope is divided into four different sections. We have the attack section of the sound, we have the decay state of your sound, and we also have the sustain and the release, better known as ADSR characteristics. You may google this to get more understanding. I will just talk about the relationship between the attack, the decay, and release in your keyboard. Advanced keyboard has three different sections. You can mix your sound as a mix engineer. So they put in their basic, basic parameters like the EQs, filters, low cut, high cut. Now it takes somebody who is an engineer to understand this concept. So when you call up grand piano, would you rather leave it at default setting, the way it came, the, the, your system loads the, the, the tone for you, or you want to manipulate? Now, if you don't have an idea of what you want to do at all, which I'm sure so many people fall under this category, you know, they dial something wrong, and before you know, the grand piano will sound like low-budgeted uh, keyboard. Learn how to engineer your sound. This also applies to the guitarist that has his pedal. There is a lot of filters and equalizers inside. If you don't understand it, you might jeopardize your mix. So there's another section again for sound design. So that is where you get your ADSR. When you check your Motif FX8 and you check your montage, they are written there. So you need to study them very well so that you can do your tone shaping and your tone balancing. When your, your tone is too sharp, you know what to do. You know, you are not, you are not, you are not alone. You are not alone in this. You have to play 
and complementary to others. All right, so we have ADSR. So we're going to talk about attack. So attack is the initial generation of sound to its peak. Now, when you hit your grand piano like this, attack is that initial sound you hear that is the loudest. It gets to a peak. And it happened in some microsecond. Okay. All right. So we're also going to talk about the decay. So they are, once the attack gets to the peak of its uh, signal, it suddenly drops. So, and so the time interval between those transitions is known as decay. All right. So we have the sustain, which is the consistency of time after the sound must have dropped from its peak, the decay. So it has to sustain, which is also a function of time and volume. So then the, the last tail of your sound is the release. Now, this is the attack, decay, sustain, and the release of our cymbals. All right. All right, so that's it. All right, so now there are two things in the keyboard that are very important. Your attitude will really express it very well. If you are angry, you might not get it right. And if you are in a good mood, in fact, heaven will rejoice <laughs> with you. So the first thing is the touch sensitivity of your keyboard. You know, they model this keyboard in a way that responds to your touch. If your touch is soft, there's a way the sound is damping. So it's not really bright. As if there's a low cut, as if they filter some high frequencies from your keyboard. Now, this is it when you have touch response activated. Now, without touch response. If you notice this, the, without the touch response, it's very loud and you can't not control the keys. Everything is just direct. So it means the attack is crazily high and you will enjoy the, the timbre of your grand piano. Now let's engage the touch response. So knowing free that this would reduce my volume, it takes someone who is disciplined to be soft and maintain. So all you need to do is just boost your volume at least to bring it up to a level that uh, it's, I mean, that was high with, without the touch response. All right, so this is really very good for your performance. The second aspect has to do with sustain. You can choose to sustain every note that you are deliberate about. Knowing fully that the keyboard is fully phonic. It means you can press so many keys at the same time. This is without the sustained pedal. 
Now let's engage sustain pedal. Now, when you combine the touch sensitivity and the sustained pedal, you're going to get some good results. All right, so that's it about uh, ADSR. So the A stands for attack, is directly related to your touch sensitivity of your keys. Sustain and the release also play an important part in that. Now, the keyboard is a multi-timbre instrument. It means you can lay different tones together. So like the PSR S775 has a key selection that you can lay. If you are really good, you should know that um, you, just, you don't just lay, but you have to decide which patches sync together and at which volume levels, you understand? If you are playing piano and part together, you might possibly get something like this. Now, if you are worshipping, it's not all about you. I don't want to be an agent of destruction. And you know, that is when you have to play with your touch sensitivity, your sustain, and the choice of patches you use. Nowadays, keyboard have basic filter. If you notice, this is really... Right. It's really bright. So the basic filter we roll off um some high end, or possibly your keyboard has two uh, pitch uh, wheel. The one is pitch bend, and the other one is modulation. So you can you can assign this to your low chord to.
So that's it. Allow God to use you to take people to atmosphere of worship. You are a minister. Anyone that plays keyboard is a minister. The Spirit of God in you is making you to interface, to produce something, the sound of heaven. Okay? So. So, if you want to take it a bit higher, you can combine some tone. Loudness is not good sound. Now, what will compromise your ADSR characteristics, compromise your, your, the quality of your sound is excessive loudness. Now, I always say this to my friends. Well, yes, we know that on stage there are a lot of spillages. Most of the time, the stage volume is even louder than the front of the house. And because of that, so many instrumentalists will strain themselves from hearing. So I would advise that you have this as your personal, uh, personal equipment. I'm sure you can afford an in-ear monitor and get a mini mixer. Yes, just get a mini mixer that at least you can, you can patch your left and right to. Connect your signal from the DI link out into your mixer. So you have a fully stereo on your mixing console. Then you can ask the engineer to send out a copy of his front of house mix such that you can toggle between your own volume and the front of house sound. So you become your own mixer because you have a small mixer. Trust me, you will love everything. So once you do that, you are not allowed to touch the volume, we're going to con com compromise a lot of things because before now, uh, the system has gone through a series of line check, gain staging. Understand? So by dialing in or out, you are compromising what the engineer had set up. So you, you can have your mini mixer, very small one, and have a provision for headphone. So once you get the two jacks, ask. The engineer to send you a mix to you and the mix is a com is, is what happened with all that instrument so once we have that mix you can now use the mixer to balance your level of mix between your keyboard and then the uh, general mix but i'm sure you come tomorrow and thank me for this information thank you very much and god bless you